flux vectors in were defined at discrete locations. And so this again, just this will be a, a review. This is called the control volume approach. And this is just review what we did. Um, and again, I would trust the slides over my notes in terms of the the I's and I plus ones, because I obviously made some mistakes. Yeah, so it looks like as long as you define it consistent, consistently where it's, it's PI minus PI minus 1 and PI minus PI plus 1, then it'll work out. Yeah, you'd, st you'd still have to do the algebra on the boundary conditions, too, for Dershowitz, right? For, yeah. for uh, uh, Neumann, they just go in to the Q, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah. But for, yeah, for, uh, for the Dershowitz, you'd, you'd still have to do the algebra to figure out exactly how to apply a constant. And it's it, it's exactly what it was before. Right? So. so that's just all the algebra, and then the next couple of pages uh, review those same manipulations. Um, the Taylor expand where the the Taylor expansion that this comes from is earlier in the notes. You can review that if you need. Um, the the trick here is that we're just subtracting zero. I know it's odd to do that, but it works out in this case. So that you can manipulate the equations to get this guy. Um, more manipulation, then you get this final equation. Ultimately, depending on whether you choose, again, there's no superscripts here. So whether you choose those to be at n or at n plus 1 gives you an implicit or an explicit method. And once you make that choice and work through the algebra, you get these final form of the equations, which are identical to what we had before. Right. So. The only the only caveat is that in these matrix equations, uh, you know you notice here there's there's still this i to the minus half, and and it's sort of disappeared in the in the matrix equations, but that's still implicitly there, because again as we move forward and we talk about heterogeneities, that's how we're going to incorporate it. We're going to basically you have your grid blocks have essentially constant permeability, but you're evaluating the flux on the boundary of them. You know, the, the fluid is flowing from one grid block to another, and you have to evaluate the flux. You have to decide what the permeability is on the boundary and what the area is on the boundary if you have two grid blocks that have varying areas. Right? And so <coughs> one, we'll talk about how you do this sort of averaging, the particular way you do this averaging. It's a harmonic averaging, in fact, if you're familiar with that. Uh, you'll see that it works out to the harmonic average of the permeabilities on the boundary. And so, uh, so the, technically the transmissibilities are defined on the boundary between two grid blocks. Um, so this, this formulation, again, gives you the same equations, but this sort of sets the stage for heterogeneities and other things that we'll be able to do in the future, looking at it this way. So. I think that's all I have for today. Um, is there any questions? No class Tuesday. Look for an email with instructions for Thursday, but likely we'll meet in the computer lab for a tutorial on CNG.